Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Words with Friends. I'm Richard. I am the uh, Director of Programs here at Hearts Need Art. And uh, I wanted to start a new, a new thing here on Facebook Live um, called Words with Friends. We're going to be talking to writers of all different kinds about their writing process and what writing means to them. We started a few months ago at the hospital, a writing program. Um, you've all met Judy, our writer in residence, and she goes in room to room and she talks to all the patients. She hands them journals and pens and writing prompts. And if they want to talk and write, she talks and writes. If they want the journal to write later, um, she does that. And it's been a really, really cool program. We've heard from the nurses that a lot of them are using the journals late at night when it's quiet and no one's around and no visitors are there. And so some of them obviously aren't, some of them you show up and they have their journals already and they've been writing for years and some have never written out anything before. And it's been really cool to watch them progress and to realize how powerful their words are. So I wanted to start um, a Facebook Live program to talk to writers about why they write and what it does to them and how it has affected their lives. And um, so I grabbed some coffee and invited my friend Mary Picarazzi. She said I could say it like that. And um, here's my mug. I wanted to show you my mug. I made this in an art class one day and the ink is starting, to, or the pens are starting to go, but I love this mug. It makes me super happy. One of Hannah's classes, we did this in the hospital. All right, anyway. So uh, we'll get Mary out here and she's gonna talk to you and me. And if you have questions, throw them in the comments. Uh, sh she'll answer them if they're appropriate and she has an answer for them, but please uh, say hello to Mary with me. Hi, Mary. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I love your mug. I want one. Well, you can come to a, come to, when we're back in the hospital, come to a do class. It. We'll Let's do it. You, a deal. Uh, where in the world are you? <laughs> you are I'm in, in the twilight zone, it looks like. I'm in space. Can't you tell? No. Know. <laughs> this is my creative room. This is my room where I do all of my mediums, whether it's painting, building, uh, writing, uh, animation, everything gets done here. This is my super right. duper creative room. It shows my OCD and my ADD side because I'm OCD, so they're all perfectly circled, but they're ADD and all over the place. So okay. they're just some mess. Yeah. Can we have a little tour of it? What do you do yeah. in that room? Like what what's you you said before you were sewing? You do I have a sewing. Stuff. Yeah, I have a sewing machine. This is kind of where I do my animation centers at because I have a, a nice little microphone right there. Um, I have a bunch of supplies. I'm building out a bunch of things. Don't mind that. Uh, but yeah, most of it just like where I do I do a lot of needlepoint, stuff like that. Things for focusing for me. Um, when I feel very stressed, focus on detail and things like that. Like needlepoint is kind of what kind of how I started doing crafts uh, early on about 12 or 13. Um, so I kind of go back to that and that gets my mind kind of cleansed again. So I kind of, that's my little sanctuary. That's so awesome. I was gonna ask you what uh, has been getting you through all of this COVID quarantine craziness, but it looks like that room right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah this, this has been a very, very important room for me, especially since all this started, um, because you never know what's gonna kind of hit the spot for you and kind of relieve that stress. Um, so for me, switching mediums constantly between painting or pencils or writing, being on the computer, all that constant change for me keeps me, it helps keep me really grounded. I think that's super important to realize that sometimes you have to take yourself out of what you're good at or what like your what your strength is and kind of dabble in other things and that's where your creativity is going to come out. Yeah, because, absolutely. Like, if you're a painter and you're painting and you're always painting, then it sort of becomes a job. Where if maybe yeah. you switch to some other medium, then you're like, oh my gosh, something crazy came out of that. Well, that's a great part of having a room like this. This is like a safe space for me. So I can create and I'm not good at certain things and I can create and then just throw away and no one's seen it, but it's gotten out of my system. So being yeah. being good or not good at something, I think is kind of irrelevant when it comes to art because creating is creating. So however you create and it choose to comes out, that's still a creation. How did, um, how did you go down the path of comedian then when you have so many other talents, creative talents? 
Um, I actually, that was interesting. So I am um, almost hitting my one year mark. So I actually got started uh, last year kind of from a tragedy. Um, I had a very amazing, amazing friend um, pass away unexpectedly. Um, and his death uh, was a wake up call for me to figure out what I really wanted to do with my life. He mm. was a guy that lived to the fullest. He was, he was that guy that inspired you to be better. And uh, I love Justin, I missed you so much. Uh, but he was a guy that made you wanna be better and be a better human for it. So that kind of made me completely reevaluate. And at 37, 36, I told my husband, I wanna do stand-up comedy. I've always wanted to do it. I wanna try it. And he said, let's do it. And he goes, but if you're gonna do it, go full force, don't, do it little by little, just go full at it. And that's how I started. When did you, when did people start realizing that you were funny? Were you young or was it like when you got older that people were like, oh my gosh. You well, coming from a large family uh, and I'm the only girl. So uh, my brothers will tell you I'm not funny. My parents will tell you I'm not funny because I've got really funny people in my household. <laughs> Um, but growing up with that constant like ribbing and kind of being witty and quick, uh, that's kind of how we grew up. So. My family is pretty funny. And then joining with my husband's family, um, he's the oldest of nine. There's a ton wow. of funny people. So I am extremely lucky to be able to um, kind of mix my world a little bit. So I would say I've always been funny, but it kind of depends on who you ask. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, is anybody else in your household using your, your craft room or is that your safe space? It's really my safe space. I kind of created it. I kind of like nooks. I'm a very like nook oriented person. So when I first moved into this house, I'm like, this is the space, that's it. So no one's really allowed in here, not even my cat allowed in here. Mm -hmm. So it's just very, it's very much just my room. So if I need sanctuary from the craziness that's happening, I just need a breather, this is where I go. Is there anything in there that you're working on right now? Or are you kind of at a... Well, no. I'll, only thing I'm working on now is on the computer that I'm on. So yeah. I'm working on some animations, shorts, um, little jokes that my daughter tells that um, aren't good, aren't long enough for a stand-up per se, but they're great little automated shorts that I can just put on on Facebook during this time while I can't be on a mic. Oh, cool. How did you start writing? How did that come about where you were like, I'm just going to sit down and start writing jokes because I know that's such a process. It's a, yeah, it's a huge process. So I've always been a journaler. So I started early on journaling. I've always, um, for me being ADD, OCD, I've always been very organized in how I do things, but how I express myself has kind of been all over the place. So for me to do it through writing, uh, when I was angry or frustrated or happy, I would just start writing and journaling. So when I went into comedy, it was sort of trying to write your voice. What do you know? What do you experience? Things that happen, you know, like um, I went to an academy the other day. Well, before all this started and I was asking for an umbrella and the guy showed me the table umbrellas. And I was oh. like, no, 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 no. An umbrella like you carry around. And he just looked at me like I was an alien and was like, yeah, the table umbrella. I'm like, I'm not carrying a table umbrella around. <laughs> so like moments like that can completely turn into a bit because those are just random things that happen. Um, but most of it is honestly, once you see my stand up, uh, once we get out of this, uh, is mostly my family. My family are huge characters and they're amazing people, but they do crazy things. So that's, that's my unique voice to bring to the audience. It's nice that you have, when you have that ear to like see it, because for them, I do that with my grandma all the time. She says some of the craziest stuff and to her, it's just normal her thoughts and I'm like you don't realize even what's coming out of your mouth <laughs> do you it does change your mindset like when I'm listening to things I'm like ooh I like that that sounds like a little bit of something and I'll I'll tuck it away in my brain and I'll noodle on it for a couple of weeks and if I think it's a solid idea then I'll write it down and start working through it and and doing draft after draft after draft and of course with comedy it's you have to really perform and then see how the audience reacts and then tweak and tweak so it's a very iterative process that you have to give yourself permission to be bad at mm -hmm. That's, yes, that's probably the hardest thing I would assume for, for comedians is to, to not necessarily always hear laughter and claps. Oh yeah. 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 I love just silence. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I try to tell our, I mean, we work obviously with musicians and artists and people who have that instant gratification when they're performing and oftentimes with patients, if they're not feeling well, or they have a procedure, we have to hear, you know, they don't want to, they don't want to hear music. They don't want to yeah. talk to us. And it's very difficult for, for our artists at first to be told no. And I was like, you have to realize how important and how powerful a no is and how that betters you and in your communication skills 
going but, forward. But it also tell it's also a different form of communication. No can mean so much. Mm -hmm. It's not just no to the immediate ask. It's it's no to the entire e expression of how they're feeling right now. There's one to say no to everything right now mm -hmm. in the world and find what what gets them to reopen, right? So it's it's a very I mean, would y'all the work that y'all do is absolutely amazing. So I am unbelievably honored to be able to do this with you. Well, you are if we ever get back in the hospital, you can come by anytime and hang out with us. What was it like then the first time you you went on stage? I'm sorry, what was the feeling? What yeah, what was that like? Oh, complete terrifying. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was something. So I had watched a few mics and I was like, of course, I did what everybody does. I'm better than that person. I can do this. And then you get up there and then you're like, you don't realize the the biological heart pounding, hand sweating. Oh my geez, there's all these people looking at me right now. And I'm expected to say something and you're holding the mic like, oh, okay. And then you're saying what you rehearsed in your head, not to the same cadence, it's not to the same relaxation that you did in your own home. home. Um, so it was a, uh, it was good. I mean, I got some laughs my first time. It wasn't crazy. Um, I had a lot of uh, friends and family there. So it was like five of them. So at least I had a table laughing, uh, which made me sound better than I was. Um, but yeah, I've gone up there many, many, many times and I'm sure I still will for many years to come and hear complete silence. So now I just tell them guys, I've been married for 10 years. I'm used to silence. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I embrace it and I love it. <laughs> used to it. Yeah. We, uh, <laughs> We talk to a lot of people in the hospital um, who who keep their journals very private and their their stories very private. But as a comedian, your life is sort of an open book, and you talk to people about it. I want to know if you can recall like your most personal story that you've turned into a joke, and what that was like to perform for the first time when you're really just like, this is who I am and this is a real story and this is my life and I want to share it with some, with strangers. Yeah, so this is, I'm working on a lot of bits about my family um, because I'm still new. I have a lot of time to start really working on it. Um, but one of the first moments that was like really me that came out was actually during an improv show at Blind Tiger. Um, we did, uh, it was, and you get a prompt and you kind of just go and run off of it, right? So I got a prompt. I don't even remember what it was, but it was around Christmas time. <clears throat> I was talking about presents at Christmas time. And I just had that moment of, you know, you're at the end of the holidays. You've had a, kind of like that exhaustion of everybody being there. And I was just like, we didn't get presents at Christmas, guys. Didn't happen because my parents believe it's Jesus' birthday. Why do you get gifts for it? And I just kind of like went off on that for like five minutes. And afterwards, I just felt so relaxed. But then I was like, Oh wait! I just told you a very important thing that just happened in my childhood. <laughs> oh no! So you that whole vulnerable fact. So getting comfortable with being vulnerable is is still is still a, a work in progress for me. I will say I'm not nearly as good as other comedians that are here locally that are just phenomenal at being able just to open up like that. So it's still a little nervous factor of after the show, are people going to come up and be like, "Wow, your childhood really sucked. You must be a really bad person." Or I mean, that's kind of what you you don't know what you're going to react to. Yeah, it's like when you tell a joke and it's funny, but you get the like, oh, like it's so sad, but it's funny at the same time and nobody knows how to react to that. Like I make jokes about losing weight. And I've had people come up to me afterwards and be like, oh my God, you look fine. Like, don't, I'm like, I'm not anorexic. I'm just saying that I, <laughs> I know I need to lose weight. Like I'm being realist. So it's kind of weird being able to have like that weird moment with some a complete stranger afterwards after you sort of opened your journal and let them peer in. Mm -hmm. So it's a very vulnerable moment, but it's it's uh, for me, it's been very uh, it's been very helpful and healing for a lot of my personal issues. So it's kind of uh, it's interesting to see how the audience reacts to it. And when they don't, that's also great, too. It tells me a lot. Yeah. What's that like when you're when you're in front of a ton of strangers and then suddenly it's over and someone comes up to you and you have you realize that you have a everybody sort of the same and you have a everybody relates to everybody on some level. Like what is that? been like to see audience members kind of react in that way not necessarily like a funny way but oh my gosh I also went through that and I relate to you like I like when I'm able to tell something that makes me look not the brightest um, and they're like oh my god I thought of that too but I haven't told anybody like those moments are like it's kind of the thing whenever you're like you're in a classroom and you want to ask a question ask it because i guarantee you four other people want to do the same thing so that's mm -hmm. been kind of my experience if i have a dumb moment where i just literally have done stupid things and someone comes up me like i did the same thing but i just didn't tell anybody i'm like oh i just told a bunch of strangers it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> So that makes me feel a little more that human connection really is, is really true. Like we are as different as we are. We are literally have similar experiences that just resonate with other people in different ways. Yeah, that's so true. It's so true. And once you realize that, I think it, it everything changes. 
Yeah. You know? It makes it it makes it easier to get along with people that you don't normally get along with because quite frankly, we're all the same, right? Right. Just different yeah. things irk you, different things irk me, you know? I tell people that all the time and they're like, well, how do you just talk to people? I'm like, that's the thing is you just talk to people. We're yeah. all like, there, you can't be nervous. People come and talk and they're like, I'm so nervous. Why? We're just going to chat. It's literally just chatting. Like, yeah, it's not that, it's not that crazy. Um, you're so used to being in front of people <laughs> staring at you feet away. And now, you know, through all of this, we're, we're adjusting to doing a lot of things online virtually like this. Mm -hmm. um, I know a bunch of comedy shows have, have transitioned into online platforms where you're performing, but you're performing to a computer and not necessarily Facebook. I want to know how that has changed maybe the way you perform and also what you think going forward, how communication with people is going to change because of this. That's a great question. Um, so being able to perform to a computer or have a conversation like this is great because I can we get back and forth, you get we get feedback. I see how you're you're nodding or not nodding and all that. But when you're doing stand up like to a computer, it's just it's very hard from a from a comic creative standpoint to get accurate feedback to adjust. So I feel like after this, a lot of people are going to be like, I'm a comic now. I'm going to go out there and I can do this in my living room and then go out on stage and bomb and then not realize that it's so different. The energy of a club, the energy of having people there, um, energy just plays a huge role. We're all yeah. made of atoms, right? So it's all energy vibrating at different speeds and being able to connect with the audience and see how they're reacting. Are they Because almost when you have a joke, they can almost kind of feel like the back and forth of it. Or when you don't and you fall flat, then you're like, okay, that tells me that doesn't work or that tells me I need to tweak here. So it's much easier from a comedic perspective to constantly adjust your writing. Um, but with all this going on, this honestly just makes me work harder as a writer. So instead of having five alternate ways to tell a joke, I may have 10 to 15. So mm. I have to work a lot harder. And then once it's done, I need to try them all out to really find out what's going to resonate. And it might be none of those 15 worked when I was in quarantine. I was like, well, I'll start all over again. And that's the process. That's the part that I love because that's really the work and the passion that goes into it. This is the reason why I, I like doing what I do. Yeah. What do you think? What What's your, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? What What's your recommendation for people or your inspiration for people who, who have never written before or who are thinking about writing and, and are afraid to do it? I think a lot of people want to write or want to be comedians, but they're afraid that they're not funny enough or they don't know how to write jokes. And just the writing process for you, what do you get out of that? Jokes or not jokes? So well, the, yeah, the way to start, honestly, if you're looking at whatever medium floats your boat, whether it's music, whether it's comedy, is what's stopping you? Because if you say or write jokes in, in, the, in the confines of a room, no one else sees them. So mm -hmm. you can afford to be bad. People, I think the expectation that people want to create and have it perfect. Mm -hmm. Mozart didn't do that. You know, the greatest comedians didn't do that. Dave Chappelle doesn't do that. Like he writes and writes and writes. So those are the kind of things you need to look at is be afraid of not being afraid of being bad because being bad is sort of the, you learn so much from your mistakes than you do from being good. Like mm -hmm. I have learned so much from bombing on stage than I have from ever, ever, ever being, having a great set. So it's kind of like, it just, it just a, a being, being comfortable in your own skin and figuring out what's stopping you. But then it's just doing it. It's honestly just get up and do it. Right. Um, I was doing knock knock jokes for a while, just writing. It's extremely hard to write a knock knock joke. And it's like, I, I, people don't think about it, but like as a comedian, I'm like, well, I can do this. And you start, and you're like, that's incredibly hard. It so, feels like every knock knock joke has been written. Like, it right? does. Like, how yeah. do you become original? How do you, but yeah. then at the, but then at the same time, from a comedic standpoint, you all the comedians you've watched influence you. So then as you're starting to write, oh, I sound like Chappelle, I sound like this person, I sound like, and then the more you write and write and write, your own voice comes out. And getting to that point is the fun part because that's like the nugget at the in the center of it all of figuring out who you are as an individual mm -hmm. and how to express yourself in a way that that um, um, relieves your stress, relieves your anxiety, like gets you to that happy place. I could talk to you for like three hours. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> we can schedule that next time. I already told you the wrong time to start this, so I won't make you go longer than. You uh, told me Eastern time, so I was okay. That's fine. Every we figured it out. Um, <laughs> if you could talk to anyone, who would it be and why? Ooh, that's a good question. Like living or dead? Anyone, living oh. or dead? Made that's up a lot of pressure. Cartoon character. I don't know. Um, I would say uh, I'm gonna go with dead. Uh, I would say Richard Feynman, 
Um, I am a my back my degree is in math. I'm a math nerd. I'm a, just anybody knows me. I'm a nerd. There's no way I'm smooth by any means. Um, but <clears throat> reading Richard Feynman's book is a book uh, autobiography written. Surely you must be joking, Mr. Feynman. In the book, he talks. He's a physicist, so he talks about physicists and stuff like that. But all his lessons are really universal. It's all about being. He was uh, one of the first physicists that had like bongos out there. He was out there with the students, so he was a very creative type person in a very structured physics world. Um, but his mentality was it doesn't matter where you come from you can spot the differences you can spot the the solutions um, so for me it's always like not being afraid of oh i don't have enough background in xyz therefore i can't do it no just do it you can do it and just keep trying like that for me is inspirational enough to keep going like i would like to know how he did that because he seemed like he had no problem like just i've never done space before let's go do that let's go talk to nasa you know and so he was the one that actually figured out why um uh, the space shuttle Challenger blew up. He had never seen anything related to space travel, didn't know anything about the rockets, but he just listened, logicked it out, and came up with an answer and actually was the answer. So to me, it's like, let's not be afraid of what I don't know. Let's try and do it. That's so amazing. Yeah, he's phenomenal. If you ever get any time, look him up. Richard Feynman is an amazing character. Not only was he great in physics, but his personal life is absolutely inspirational. This is what I love about talking to people is that everybody has such amazing stories and you like strangers on the street. You have no idea what they do when you don't see them on the street. I love it. Yeah. People are great. Um, how can people follow you and laugh with you? And when you get back in clubs, go see you. Um, so I have my Facebook, I have Insta, Instagram, um, did your fig, you flashed it up there. Um, I post daily stuff or semi daily stuff. I'm going to be posting some animation shorts, uh, shortly. Um, but when I'm not here, uh, I'm a blind tiger comedy club, which is inside, uh, the magic time machine. It's a phenomenal club that is host about 50 people. And it's actually phenomenal comedians from not only San Antonio, but from Houston, Dallas, Austin. It's in the most, one of my best clubs to ever play in because it is so intimate and you mm -hmm. really feel as an audience member, you feel a part of the show. And as a comedian, you feel that the audience is with you and you get that full reaction, good, bad, or indifferent, you get that full reaction. Um, so I'm there every Friday. Um, hopefully when this is all over really soon, we have a great free shows and then we have pay what you can shows. Uh, it's just a phenomenal place that really cultivates art. Um, and I am absolutely in love with that place. And they're super supportive of up and coming comedians. Yes. And right, I, I think it's a great, great place. And, and you never know who drops in because no. uh, so we've had people from LOL that are at uh, headlining. Um, they may come over and do a set. You just never know. Preacher Lawson's been there recently. Bobby Lee was there. Uh, Jeremiah Watkins was there, uh, was one of the last people I saw there. Uh, he was just in town. So it's a cool place. So that when you see people that are in LA, New York, and all over the place come and want to do that room, it's like, oh, we got something special here. Yeah, it's a very strange place. Well, the first time I was ever <laughs> there, I was like, where am I? And I'm not sure I'm safe to go in the basement. It's like you're inside Willy Wonka's Playhouse it's, or Mind. I don't know. It's very bizarre, but it's like one of my favorite happy creative spaces ever. It's phenomenal. It's like craft room, but dark. <laughs> yes, yes, very so. Sure but it could be fun. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have one last question for you, and then I'll let you go. I want to give everybody a writing prompt for today. Do you have a writing prompt for someone that they could start? Ooh, that's a good one. So um, I like to think very off the wall and creatively. So usually off the wall prompts will get me to a prompt what's more normalized or more in line. Um, so I start off with something crazy like, uh, if I could be a clown on a wall for a day, what would it be? Ooh. So something crazy, like if you were like a little speck on the wall and I'm a clown and that clown mentality, seeing everything from a different lens, what would it look like? That's awesome. Yeah. I'm That's so one of my good. favorite ones to start with. I was going to come up with one, and I'm so glad I threw it to you to do, because mine are not, <laughs> not exciting. So that's your prompt today, everyone. If you were a clown on the wall, wait, what was it? If you're a clown on the wall. What would it look like? What would it look like? If you want to write in our comments what you come up with, feel free to do that. Awesome. I think that's a great one. And then Mary can uh, share them. Oh, yeah. Bro. Um, a writer in residence said that was a great one, too. She's watching. Judy. Yay. Congrats. Thanks, Judy. Yes. Mary, thanks for hanging out with me. Oh, it was my pleasure. I'm so grateful that I was able to do anything. I love your organization. And anytime this is all over, I will be there. We'll be in touch. You're the awesome. best.
Thanks Thank everyone you. for watching. Thanks Mary for coming on and uh, we will see you later today with some music. Bye everyone. Bye.